Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 6. They can see exactly where you are when you uploaded that picture. Teenagers and parents in West Fargo are warning others about a Twitter account they say is stalking young girls. Thank you for joining us tonight. Parents are alarmed over a Twitter account following a lot of teenagers from West Fargo high schools. Some say the user is a sex offender. And one dad called 911 saying the person was stalking his daughter. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Nicole Johnson has been investigating what's going on. Nicole. A detective from Cass County tells me a frightened parent called last week saying he thought a strange man was stalking his daughter. The detectives didn't find anyone and aren't investigating any further at the moment. However, I spoke with multiple people who've been followed by the account. They say you can't be too careful. I went on his following and I saw that there, there's like adult, I guess, pages with porn, naked women on it, and then a bunch of girls from around here between the ages of like 14 and 18. It just wasn't right. The teenager I spoke with says a lot of high school students let anyone follow them, even strangers, because it's all about how many friends you have. She says there's a lot of danger in, that comes along with that. If anyone strange follows you, you should block them right away. Mike. All right, thanks, Nicole. We also spoke to a mom whose 13-year-old daughter was followed by the account. She says there are certain settings you need to be watching on your child's phone. If certain ones are turned down, no people can find the exact location of your child. We're going to tell you more about that tonight on Valley News Live, 10 at 10. Some new developments as we continue investigating the hoax robocalls that briefly shut down two local schools yesterday afternoon. It's the latest in a nationwide wave that has law enforcement and even the federal government taking notice. Valley News Team's Bradford Eric has our investigation. Bradford? Mike, hoax phone calls are not targeting just schools. The FBI said a few months ago that airports and businesses are being preyed upon too. And it's gotten so bad that a bill was introduced late last year in the House of Representatives, the Interstate Swatting Hoax Act, meaning if you're found guilty, the text of the bill says you could spend life in prison. And we're not talking about swatting a fly here. We're talking major resources with millions of lives and dollars on the line. Swatting, intentionally triggering a vast response by emergency services through a hoax phone call. It's what many officials believe happened in at least 19 states, as automated bomb threats meant a huge police response around the country, costing millions of dollars. Since this crisscrossed the country, I called the FBI to find out if they're investigating this matter. A spokesperson told me they are aware of the calls to area schools and that the agency is, quote, communicating with state and local agencies. But they're not actively investigating the origin of these calls. They told me to contact the BCA. That agency referred me back to the FBI. And they all present significant challenges, require a great deal of investigative time and cost, and create a great deal of anxiety in school communities. Ken Trump is a nationally renowned school security expert, saying these calls could have originated overseas, affecting dozens of schools and school districts. He adds evacuating a school is not always the best way to go about responding either. Parents should check to see if their schools have threat assessment teams, training, and protocols. Communicate with school officials to understand what heightened security procedures may be put in place. Ken Trump adds, make sure you know how the local schools communicate in emergency situations, whether that's through social media, phone calls, or emails. I reached out to West Fargo schools since they were targeted, asking what their emergency procedures are. I was told that they had spoken to us yesterday and did not feel inclined to do another interview today. I didn't get a call back from Grand Forks Public Schools regarding their policy either. Mike. All right, thanks, Bradford. We put more comments from the FBI along with a link to that House bill on our website. Just go to valleynewslive.com. The bathroom remodel for a Christine, North Dakota homeowner is finally complete thanks to the help of area organizations volunteering their time and resources. This is what Dolores Kramlick's bathroom was left looking like nearly two years ago. She paid who she thought was a licensed contractor 1200 bucks to remodel her bathroom. He started the work, took the money, and left the bathroom half gutted. Kramlick called our whistleblower hotline back in 2015, and we were able to get her money back, but her bathroom was not fixed. Bell State Bank heard about the story and contacted the members of the Home Builders Association. 
Last week, they started repairing the bathroom with help from Stone Ridge Builders. Kramlich says she is thankful for their hard work. After nearly two years of sponge baths, she's been able to take three showers since yesterday. This story originally came to us through our whistleblower hotline. If you need help with an issue in your community, give us a call at 237-6576 and leave your tip. There are a few thunderstorms rumbling in the area. Let's find out where and what the chances are of having something in the FM area tonight. Hutch, I know you know. Yeah, it does look pretty quiet. If you're heading outdoors tonight, we shouldn't have too much to worry about in Fargo or really Grand Forks. A, a couple of white green echoes from the radar way out to the west. Most of the activity east of the Red River. Otter Tail County, a few scattered showers and thunderstorms. One moving toward Wadena now has a little lightning and maybe some brief heavy rain. Uh, taking a look off to the Red River Valley near Colfax, and we are seeing a sh thunder shower there moving toward the Barnesville area. Henning, a storm just exiting your area toward Wadena, and up north, a decaying thunder shower exiting Monoman County as we speak. So temperatures are mild today. Mid 80s in Fargo will spend most of the early evening slipping back into the 70s. That's the same thing we'll see in Grand Forks. Uh, increased chance of rain as we go through the next seven days. I'll have details on that and some stronger thunderstorm potential as well in a few minutes. Some more rumblings coming our way. Yes. All right. Thanks, Hutch. Grand Forks police are asking for your help as they try to identify this man you see behind me. Here's a closer look. He's a person of interest in a theft that occurred at Borrowed Bucks last week. If you have any information, you're asked to contact police. Charges have been filed against a man accused of breaking into a Lakes Country home naked. The Ottertail County Sheriff's Office says Tyler Janowski was confronted and got into a fight with a homeowner in Ottertail, Minnesota yesterday morning. The homeowner says Janofsky and uh, held Janofsky until deputies arrived. He's been charged with burglary, theft, and assault. Investigators believe controlled substance abuse was a contributing factor in this incident. The Barnes County Sheriff's Office is looking for a vehicle of interest after discovering a homemade explosive device earlier this week. Authorities are asking for the public's help in identifying a Toyota or Mazda white extended cab pickup. Barnes County Sheriff's deputies were called to a residence along 45th Street Southeast in rural Fingal, North Dakota, to investigate a suspicious homemade device. If you have any information about the vehicle in question, you are asked to contact the Barnes County Sheriff's Office at the number right there on your screen, 845-8530. More zebra mussels have turned up in the Red River. The mussels were discovered at the Red River Intake and Pumping Station. Crews found them performing routine maintenance on the pumping equipment. This discovery comes nearly a year after an, an adult zebra mussel was found on an intake screen at the Fargo Red River intake. In 2013, Moorhead Public Service finished modifications to the Red River pumping station, which included the addition of an intake screen. A routine inspection in March showed no zebra mussels attached to the intake screen. We have a Valley News Live exclusive for you now. It's a sneak peek into UND's new $124 million medical school. Administrators just started moving in as they prepare to start classes in August. The new four-story building contains 325,000 square feet of floor space. The massive job of getting everyone moved in will take weeks. When the move is completed, the new facility will house 1,500 people. When you walk into the building, you'll be greeted by a main lobby that soars into the sky, and you'll be able to see floating stairs above your head. Also connected to the main lobby is a food court that will be available for anyone to use. The medical students will be here, physical therapy, occupational therapy, medical lab science, sports medicine, uh, graduate degrees in basic sciences. The med school already has $45 million in new research grants that will be used to, uh, in part to pay staff. It has not been determined yet what exactly will be done with the space in the old medical school. In Carrington, North Dakota, voters there are once again deciding on a new elementary school. The superintendent says this proposal will cost less than the proposal that was voted down in February. If approved, construction is expected to start in the spring of 2017. If the referendum fails, the Carrington Public Schools website says that they will continue to repair and maintain the existing building. Polls are open until 7 o'clock tonight. 
It's Tuesday, and that means it's time for another restaurant report card. Coming up tonight on Valley News Live 10 at 10, we'll investigate some restaurants in Detroit Lakes. Tune in to see which restaurants have been dinged by the health department. What do firefighters do when they aren't battling a blaze? Well, they're helping others when they can. Details later on Valley News Live at 6. Slow drifting clouds on our tower cam time lapse from the west earlier in the day. Some verga out there. That's precipitation that evaporates before it gets to the ground. Some cumulus clouds developing uh, above some fires out to the east in Minnesota. We'll have details on what you can expect as a bumpy Wednesday is ahead right after this.